This slide shows the three major steps for constructing the hierarchy. The first step is to find similar categories of objects and group them together. Please notice that we do not set a restriction about a fan out of each node. That means a, a node may have a two children or three children or more children. The fan out is determined by the data. The second step is to construct neural networks for each node. We need to consider whether we can use a smaller neural network to achieve the desired accuracy, or we need to use a larger, deeper neural network to achieve the desired accuracy. The third step is to train the neural networks. Now we have a multiple neural networks. We will train them from the top root node gradually towards the leaf node. These are the three major steps. Earlier, I explained the need to find visual similarities. How do we actually do that when we are giving a real data set? Let's consider the CIFA 10 data set. In the CIFA 10 data set, there are 10 categories of objects, including airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, and truck. If we take an image to an untrained neural network, the output is almost equally distributed among the 10 categories. For example, an image of a cat has 9.4% being recognized as an airplane. An image of a truck has 9.8% being recognized as a bird. This means it's basically choosing one of the categories randomly and it's almost uniformly distributed among the 10 categories. Next, we can see the, a trend neural network. We can use any existing good neural network for this purpose. Since a neural network has already been trained, a cat should be recognized as a cat. In this case, a cat has only 1.1% chance recognized as an airplane, has 2.6% chance recognized as an automobile, or 3.2% recognized as a truck. That means the cat is very different from airplane, automobile, or truck. If the input is a cat, uh, there is 33% chance recognized as a cat and 20% chance recognized as a dog. As you can see, cat is similar to dog. Let's consider an image of a truck as an input. After we take a train neural network, if the input is truck, he has 55% chance to be recognized as a truck and 19.3% chance to be recognized as an automobile. From here, we can use the softmax to determine the groups. Suppose the input is an airplane, the softmax layer uses a sigmoid function and sigmoid function has the property it will amplify the similarity when the variable is larger. In this case, if the input is an airplane, it has 54.8% chance to be recognized as airplane. After a sigmoid function, it goes all the way to 1. If the input is airplane, it has 52.2% chance to be recognized as a ship. After a sigmoid function, it has 0 0.994. Now we will put airplane and ship together in the same category. The next question is the size of each module. We do not preset the module size. Instead, the size is determined by the data. The first step, as I had explained earlier, takes the data and group it. After we have grouped the data, we will pass the data into our root module. We will grow the root module as large as necessary so that the different categories can be classified 
correct. We will start with fewer layers. The accuracy will be too low. Then we'll grow the layers. The number of layers increases. The module in the root becomes bigger. But you also can distinguish the, the different categories more correctly. Of course, in the, uh, in the extreme case, the root becomes the original very deep neural network. In that case, all the categories can be classified by the root node only, and we do not need to have a tree. The method to select the size follows this procedure. The method considers the ratio of improvement of accuracy and the increase of the module size. If the accuracy improves significantly when the size increases, we will increase the size, meaning we will add more layers. If the ratio is small, that means further adding more layers into the one node has only marginal improvement. This node size will stay the same. By taking this approach, it is possible that different nodes in the tree may have different number of layers. The next step is to train the neural network. We will use the same back propagation method, but we will start from training the root module. Because from the root module, we already know what are the expected output. After the root module has been trained, then we can train the children nodes. For each node, the input is the output from the parent. We start from the root, then we train the children of the root. Then we train the grandchildren of the root. This is the tree built for the CIFA-10 dataset. The tree reveals a few important properties. This method does not predetermine the number of children. We do not select the tree to be a binary tree or trinary tree. The number of children for each node is determined by the data. The softmax layer determines that the truck and the automobile are visually similar. Airplane and ship are visually similar. Group number three has four children. Two of them are leaf nodes for frog and the horse. The other two nodes are group four and group five. From this figure, you can also observe that Leaf nodes may have a different distances to the root. The truck is two nodes down from the root, but the cat is three, no three nodes down from the root. This slide compares the method with several other methods. In terms of model size, the number of operations per image, and the error rate. The comparison considers two datasets, CIFAR-10 and ImageNet. The three module neural networks are much smaller in terms of sizes and the number of operations. For the test arrows, this method is slightly higher for the CIFAR-10 dataset, but comparable for ImageNet. This slide shows the energy consumption when we run this method on Raspberry Pi 3 and 0. We compare with VGG and ContenseNet. Again, you can see this method consumes much less energy than the other two methods. In terms of the inference time, it takes as little as 0.36 seconds for CIFA-10 in Raspberry Pi 3 and below 2 seconds in Raspberry Pi 0. To summarize, the three module neural networks is a different type of machine model compared with the traditional deep neural networks. The three networks break a very deep neural network into several smaller and shallower networks. The concept is to perform classification progressively through a path of a tree from the root to leaf nodes. This new architecture is smaller in terms of memory and is also faster using less energy. You can get the source code of this method at the end of today's lecture. I will show you in a slide. Also, in one of the programming assignments, you will fill in the missing code used as part of this method.